It's one of the fortified masterpieces of Louis XIV's reign. The citadel at Besançon stands proud over the city. This actor tells visitors more about its creator, the military engineer Vauban. You can see how both the river and the adjacent hills were used. The way that the surroundings were incorporated make Vauban's fortifications so special. An engineer turned marshal, Vauban is one of the most famous names of the Sun King's era. With their signature forms, his citadels have played a crucial role in defending the country. Vauban was a man who only ever knew war. He used his skills in mathematics, geometry and drawing to help the king and protect the French people. Today, there's not a single border which doesn't have a work of Vauban standing on it, either on a site that was designed by or taken over by him. That's why, two centuries on, we're still inspired by Vauban's work to build and fortify all over the world. This visionary never forgot his roots. His work owes much to his native land, the Morvan, His memory is still very much alive in these hills. There's a museum dedicated to him in his native village, which now also bears his name. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Vauban Museum. I'm just putting Vauban's bust back in its proper place. Up until 1867, Saint-Léger Vauban was called Saint-Léger de Foucheré. But a decree signed by Napoleon III changed the village's name to pay tribute to the most illustrious of its children. We wanted to show that he was a true native of the Morvan. In all his blueprints, he was inspired by everything that can be found in the Morvan, its forests, its animals. All the red dots you can see here are traces of Vauban. Sophie acts as our tour guide. I'm going to show you the house where Vauban was born. It's not very far from here. This was where Vauban's birthplace once stood. Vauban had a very simple upbringing with the farmers of the village. He lived in a house a bit like this one, a sort of barn with a common living area next to a stable. This shows why Vauban was always keen to protect the interests and the needs of the people. He left this house and went on to become a marshal, and a marshal of France at that. In 1675, Vauban decided to buy Bezoche Castle, which once belonged to his great-grandfather. The 12th century fortress is located a few kilometers from the engineer's birthplace. This is the grand staircase. One of Vauban's descendants shows us around. Mind your head. Mind the step. How many rooms are there? About a hundred in total in the castle. In this office, Vauban liked to work with the comforting warmth of a fireplace right by his feet. Next, there's his bedroom. With his bed, of course. It's made up of 80 sections of tapestry sewn together with black velvet bands. They are Turkish and Middle Eastern images, which was very fashionable. Vauban was a man always on the road. These chairs can be taken apart because back then you travelled with your furniture. Then comes this grand gallery, covered with coats of arms. It's easy to imagine it buzzing with activity as dozens of draftsmen, architects and engineers followed Vauban's instructions in order to fortify France. It's very moving to think that it was right here that much of the strategy to defend France was thought up before it was presented to Louis XIV. And there's an exceptional piece at the back of the gallery. This is Vauban's battle armour. There are some impact marks from musket shots and not too far from his heart. He was, after all, a man who went to battle. In 1703, Louis XIV named him Marshal of France, the country's highest military distinction. 
Four years later, Vauban died and was buried in the parish church at Bazoche. In 1807, Napoleon moved his heart to Les Invalides in Paris. The military architect left behind an exceptional legacy. Twelve of his works are now listed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites.